Hey everybody, welcome to episode 12 of Restoration Z. I'm going to get straight into this one. If you've watched last episode in the series up until now, you know what's going on. These have had their white paint, now it's time to clear coat. Uh, these will get a coat, then about 15 minutes, then another coat. I'll leave it an hour or two for them to mostly dry. Then this will get moved, then the frame will come in, same thing. And then I'm going to leave the frame and these pieces for as long as I possibly can to cure and harden the paint fully. Then I'll wait for a bit, do another coat. I might do three coats, can't decide yet. Okay, so they got their clear coat and they have been sat out here for a couple of days in the sun, uh, baking away. So they're gonna be nice and hard when they go back on the bike. But why have they been out here a couple of days? I've had some problems. Okay, so what went wrong? As you can see, the frame looks fine, uh, but it isn't, it's been sanded. There's a couple of reasons for that. So I sprayed this white, as you saw in the last video, and I'd left it 24 hours to cure before I took it off the stand to put the small parts on to do the clear coat. I thought it had cured enough uh, to do that and I put it onto a nice flat fresh piece of wood and it was just sort of pivoted between a point back here and the front edge here. I thought, yeah, that'll be absolutely fine. A lot of you are now gonna probably know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, it was a bit soft. It stuck to the surface and when I picked up the frame, it went kick and it just took a tiny little piece of paint off from under here. Uh, it was relatively flat, so I just sort of smoothed it with my finger, uh, it seemed fine, so I went over it with a couple of coats of white and thought, it's underneath, it's got paint over it, it'll be fine, no one's going to notice that. Um, and it actually blended in quite nicely, until the drip turned up. <laughs> I went slightly too heavy, because I was trying to do it in two coats rather than going up a bit more. If you ever try and shortcut something, you're going to pay for it. But I also noticed a bit of roughness on some parts of the frame that wasn't really there in the primer. It seemed like I'd had some of it appear in one of the paint coats. So I was like, I'm not really happy with this finish. That's got a drip on it now. The best thing I can do to solve all these problems is to sand the frame back uh, to give myself a really good base to get a couple of nice layers of white on to, you know, gloss everything up. Well, I took some 800 grit and I started just gently sanding to see what would happen and something a bit weird was happening. The top coat of paint, which had had well over 24 hours to cure, was tacky and it was sanding off in these little tiny rolls. It just didn't seem right. Well, thankfully and very therapeutically, by just sanding over it, all those little rolls come off and what's left underneath is a lovely smooth flat finish. Um, so I'm guessing that one of the layers for some reason didn't properly cure. I don't know, whatever. It's meant we're able to solve all the issues. I've already sanded this down mostly. I need to have a quick another once over it, find any sort of rough patches I want to sort out. It has gone a bit thin in a couple of places, which highlighted to me that I hadn't got enough paint down in the first place. So this is actually probably quite beneficial that I'm doing this. Uh, I've got more paint, I've got panel wipes and sandpaper, I'm going to go over this and say just knock down any rough areas I'm not entirely happy with, um, get any dust off that I've just put on with the panel wipes, and then I've got white paint to spray it again. So this has delayed the whole project by about four days or so because the weekend came in the middle and I needed a day to stop. It doesn't matter, these things happen, to expect things to not go wrong would be foolish, so Let's just keep moving on. It should actually mean we have a much better paint result because I've done a lot more prep work now. It's got this, this layer underneath it. Okay, well I think the sanding's done. I've basically just sort of been feeling other parts of the frame. Uh, if it feels a bit rough, giving it a very light sand and blending it in with everything around it. And now it feels nice and smooth, although I need to wipe it down with some panel wipes because there's some dust and stuff. Give it 10-15 minutes to dry off a bit, and then I'm going to paint it. How much of that I'm going to film, I'm not sure, because I really need to concentrate on doing this, and jumping around with cameras is only going to make things a bit more complicated. Plus, it's spraying white with white, what can you even see? Okay, so I sanded it, and I sprayed it again, and we have a much, much better result. As you can see, this looks way better than it did. I hope, well, you may not be able to tell, actually, because white doesn't really show too well, because of the brightness on camera but this is a much better coat of paint which has had uh, just over 24 hours so what I'm going to do now is clear coat it and then I'm going to leave it for as long as I can before I start building on it so if I can leave it four five six days great uh, there's other stuff to do in the meantime 
and I've got other stuff to show in this video so let's just get on with that shall we by the way if you're confused as why this isn't rattling these lacquers don't have balls in them and no it's not stuck in the bottom they literally just don't um, Inting this frame is not as easy as it looks because it isn't it's not a flat surface. Yeah, you've got a flat surface here and you've got one here, but you've got so many angles and the problem is you need to try and spray enough paint in the right areas, but at the same time not blast onto a further away surface because you need the distance of the nozzle to be the right distance. Um, and, but there are some parts like where you can't actually get a direct spray on it. You kind of have to go through an angle and then if it blows through you end up with overspray up here and stuff. And, Maybe that's what caused it. I mean, I did, I did paint it slightly differently, um, but I couldn't really tell you how I just did it differently. I just maybe it was more heavy, I think, if anything. I let it run. Well, not run, but, you know, there is a perfect place between not enough and just enough paint and too much paint. And finding that is difficult, especially when you're spraying white onto white. The clear, thankfully, shouldn't be too hard. I tend to be okay with clears, but as I say, the problem is it's getting to all the areas evenly. But... I've got to do it, so be brave. I just hope it'll be okay. I'll cry if it goes wrong, but I haven't got a choice. Okay, I may have forgotten to press record earlier on, so I don't know how much I got on film. Sorry about that. Uh, but what I can tell you is this has two coats of clear coat on it. Um, I want to put one more on, and then that's it. It's going to be left for at least 24 hours. Then I'm going to get it moved out of here so I can get on with more stuff. But I also don't want to take it off the stand. I want the, the paint to have time to sit and fully, 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 fully cure for like a few days. There is nothing more we can do now but wait and see how that turned out. I really hope it turns out good. It looks good. It's way better than it was. But man, this does mean we're getting closer to uh, putting things back together. And talking of putting things back together, I've got some new bits to show you. So should we do that? Okay, so as I mentioned before, I wanted some blue hosing and I ordered what I thought was silicon and ended up with polyurethane. Well, I've got some proper silicon stuff and it actually fits where I needed it to. More on that later in the series. Now, um, silicon hoses, the pre, well, the, the handmade bent ones like these, in the UK, it was going to be £70 for those three. From China, I got the full kit, ignore the clamps, I actually bought these separately. I'm just making sure I've got the right sizes. Um, for £24, and they're really nice. They're, they look high quality, they look handmade, they look, you know, they, they look imperfect in ways because that's how, you know, handmade stuff looks that way. You can see the way they've been bound. So, £70 for three or 25 for five of them. I mean, yeah, it did take four weeks. I've also picked up, uh, as well as those hose clamps, some more of these little uh, hose clips because there's lots of these all over the bike. Some of them look a bit nasty and I thought, well, if I can replace them with new ones, I will. So I've got a bag of those. That was only about a tenner. The other two things is this, which is the handlebar brace. And this has clearly been painted by someone. Um, not necessarily that well. <laughs> so what I've done is sanded it back. I will acid etch prime it and spray it silver. Uh, and I'm going to be spraying the master cylinder the same colour because it too clearly got the spray paint treatment as you can see from how rounded the lettering is on the top. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take that off as much as I can and spray that. Not ideal because it's obviously being around brake fluid, it's just a problem. But I'll have to take it apart, clean it and just do the best I can. But I won't need the garage cocooned for that so I can get on with other jobs when I finally move the frame. I can't tell you how excited I am to actually have some proper forward progression. Waiting on paint to dry is, well, it's like waiting paint for paint to dry. And after all of that, it is painted and done and clear coated. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's perfectly acceptable. As a rattle can job, it's fine. Uh, you know. And the most important thing is I wanted to make sure I had enough covering on there and protection to make sure it doesn't rust in the future. It is smooth and it's shiny, as you can see. The only thing is it's a little bit rough in a couple of places and I think that's caused by overspray from a distance. So a little buff um, with some polishing compound, although completely unnecessary, will solve that most likely. So, uh, well, in theory, I guess we can take all these. Hang on, let me think. Is there anything? No, I don't need to do anything else. These can come out. So let's have a, have a little look how well the bits of foil worked. 
See, because you can literally screw them into the threads. Okay, it's about half ten at night. Everything is still looking good. A little bit of a polish, and we'll be all good. As you may have noticed now, the garage is out of cocoon mode, which means that I can get to my tools, which means I can get on with the next jobs that needs to be done. I wasn't expecting the delay, so I didn't make everything else accessible, if you know what I mean, so I just covered everything up so it's protected. But because the paint delays meant I couldn't get on with anything else. But now, yep, paint on here is still looking great. As you know, I've taken all those out. I also popped off the little covers from here, and as you can see, that's painted just far enough down in, but not touch the seats, which is great. Um, the only jobs left to do now is fork seals. I need to go and order the fork seals now. Um, oh yeah, I checked into this, because someone said to me, you know, you should try and get OEM seals if you can. 65 pounds versus about 20 for third party. I'm gonna make sure I get, I've been told get Japanese or Italian, don't get Chinese seals. They are more likely to go sooner. So that is something I will take on board. I, you know, so I defend Chinese bikes and stuff, but when it comes to seals, yeah, okay. Italy, Japan, they're the good ones. Um, other than that, it's clean up the engine block, clean up the carb, and then it's reassembly. We're really at that point. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, I cannot wait. I will give this a quick polish with some compound before I put the bike back together, just because where I've had to spray from from a distance with some things like here, if I've got any overspray a bit further away, if it's slightly gritty on the top, um, that will come off nice and easily. So I'll get the best result I'm gonna get if I give it a quick polish. Apologies for the lack of video. It's very early in the morning. The sun is starting to come up, the birds are chirping, but editing has to get done. Uh, I've realised I've basically got to a point with this which is a good natural end because in reality what we've just done is repeat what we did in the last episode because of the problem with the paint. So I think it would be a good idea to keep this one short as a, a paint rectifying issue video and then the next one we can get on with the build. So let's end this one here. A massive thanks to the supporters of this channel, the people that watch the videos, like them, subscribe to the channel. The people who support me through Patreon who make this channel possible, and I should also include the people who support me through PayPal, but a couple of people have just basically said, hey, I want to chuck you some money to help you with the project. It seems pretty cool, and I don't, I'm not a member of Patreon or anything, so it's, you know, very cool of them. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, otherwise, much more of the same to come. This bike's going to look pretty amazing, I reckon. Catch you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to see future videos. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please consider joining my Patreon to get early access to videos, questions answered in the monthly Q&A, your name on screen, and some exclusive content, all for as little as a dollar a month. You can also check out the links in the description to my merch and other ways to directly support the channel. Thanks for watching.